there's a lot of ways to improve your gameplay in Genshin Impact and these are the top 5 techniques that will help you out. One of the things that Genshin Impact won't disclose in its tutorials are the specific timings of certain elemental reactions. And while it's true that the whole premise of the game is to cause as many elemental reactions as possible, there's actually a secret timer that's attached to every character's skill and attack. And this is called an internal cooldown timer, which is not shown anywhere, but it definitely has a presence. And the best example would be Fischl's elemental skill. When she summons Oz, the Raven shoots out electro attacks that each supposedly will also apply an electro status on the enemy. However, these status effects don't actually get applied after every single attack and instead they share internal cooldown timer which basically limits the first six shots to only apply the reaction once. And this can be tested with elemental pyro slimes where you can see for yourself that overload reaction only triggers on its first shot and then afterwards some of the shots don't trigger and only after the sixth shot do we see another overload reaction. And the same also happens with cryo slimes as well. And there's more characters than just Fischl who have the same internal cooldown tracker. For example, Tartaglia has some of the fastest attacks when he uses his Hydro Blades, but they also don't apply Hydro status after each attack and share the internal cooldown as well. Basically, keep an eye out on your character's abilities and attacks to determine how often they actually apply their status effects before committing to more powerful attacks or even reactions. One good rule of thumb would be to examine characters which have a lot of elemental attacks and track their status applications. However, it's important to understand that these timers are actually tied between a character's skill and the target enemy. So if Oz were to shoot two times and two different enemies would be the receivers, they would still each get an electro status. So it's clear that this internal cooldown timer is tracked separately on each enemy. All in all, prioritize which enemies to attack by keeping an eye on your elemental statuses. Even though there are many reactions in the game, they all fall into two groups, transformative and amplifying. A transformative reaction is anything that produces an additional damage number or effect besides your elemental attack, so these can be overload, superconduct or electrocharge reactions. On the other hand, there's only two amplifying reactions, melt and vaporize. And instead of showing up as a separate damage number, they amplify the next elemental attack you will deal. And the biggest difference between the two is that even if they share the elemental mastery as their stats increase their effectiveness, only only melt and vaporize take into account every other stat on your character. And this is why amplify reactions at the current state of Genshin Impact are considered to be superior in terms of damage. It's also important to note that these reactions don't necessarily fall into the strategy of using every single character to produce one large damage number and instead they can be used in a more flexible way. So even though Bennett, Mona, Sucrose or any other animal or geo character can provide stat boosts to produce bigger damage, you only really need two characters with respective elements for either melt or vaporize to take advantage of these powerful reactions. But if you want to find good builds for amplifying reactions, make sure to follow us on Twitter, link in the description. Now part of the reason why transformative reactions fall off compared to amplifying is because the endgame players and veterans start to obtain more powerful artifacts and the stats they get are far more superior than compared to just elemental mastery, which is still being used in these amplifying reactions greatly, but attack, critical damage and critical rating still contribute to devastating attacks. So if you have characters that can create melt or vaporize reactions and if you're starting to acquire endgame artifacts you could try out and see if you're getting better results than other reactions although it can still heavily depend on the enemies you're facing or even the team lineup. Keeping yourself alive usually comes in the form of healing and shields, but one good way to stay away from trouble would be by using invincibility frames or simply iframes as shorthand abbreviation. And the best way to learn how to use these iframes would be by utilizing your elemental burst, especially the ones that have long animations. For example, during Child's boss fight, he will place a mark on you and then perform an unavoidable ultimate attack, which can actually be evaded if you trigger your elemental burst animation, resulting in Child making a fool of himself. And these iframes are an extremely crucial part of endgame content like the Spiral Abyss where you will often run out of stamina so your best bet would be by triggering your burst. The other alternative to surviving attacks would be by using a character that has a lot of defense and health right before you get attacked. For example, if you're not fast enough when you get trapped in ice prison and there's more Fatui attacks that are incoming, you could switch to someone like Zhongli who will soak up the damage and then switch back to your previous character. In short, use these two methods to keep yourself alive when you're out of shields or healing. There's a couple of movement tricks you can take advantage of without too much effort. The first one is called dash cancelling, which basically works with you doing a dash and then immediately using your jump as a follow-up, which results in you covering more distance for less stamina. And you can use this tactical maneuver for evading enemy attacks inside the spiral abyss by using slightly less stamina than you normally would, especially if there's an annoying cryo aura that puts a lot of strain on your stamina bar. You can also jump quickly between the three destroyable objects from one of the hypostasis bosses, which could prove very useful since the distance and 
travel time is slightly quicker, giving you more opportunities to take care of them. And if you want something that gives a slight damage boost, you could also try walk cancelling, which only works with certain characters like Ningguang or Klee. And all you really need to do is hold down your button for moving forward and do your basic attacks in short intervals. And the time difference to cast these attacks is very small but still noticeable, so it can give you extra boost in damage, but make sure to exercise this technique with caution, since you still need to worry about your surrounding enemies. This last technique is going to become a bit irrelevant once 1.2 update comes out, but it's still going to prove useful for those who are busy exploring the world. And this of course refers to using your mouse wheel near loot to quickly pick it up. All you need to do is scroll your wheel up and down and keep mashing that collect button. This can actually prove useful when you're opening treasure chests on steep mountains, since a lot of the time, the loot falls down before you're able to pick it up. But to summarize, there's an internal cooldown timer for certain character attacks and skills, which limits the amount of times you can apply their status effect on enemies, so keeping this in mind can help you with prioritizing different enemies. And the reason why a lot of endgame players prefer amplifying reactions all comes down to the fact that these reactions are using every single stat, including elemental mastery, and the attacks end up especially strong if you obtain a lot of artifacts with good stats. Also, if you want to keep yourself alive, you can use the iframes and other characters with better survivability to absorb your enemy's devastating attacks. Finally, you can get more out of dash cancelling by covering slightly more distance and using less stamina, or you can also get a tiny improvement in your damage by using walk cancelling with certain characters. Let us know in the comments which of these techniques you've been using or have any other ones to suggest. Also, don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell notification on as well as make sure to gently press the like button. Thank you for watching us.